for keeping us in our right mind, for keeping all hurt, harm, and danger away from us, keeping your angels of protection and can't round about us. God, we just give you glory for all the wonderful things that you've done. Lord, we know that we can do nothing in and of ourselves, but it is only through your grace and mercy that we're even here right now. It's through your grace and mercy that we are taking our next breath without even having to think about it, to practice or rehearse. You breathe the breath of life into us daily, God, and we say thank you. God, I pray that you would we ask for your forgiveness right now for anything we said, done, or thought, imagined, anything that was unpleasing to you, God, any transgressions. God, anything that would keep us from your love, that would keep us away from uh, just the expectation of being a kingdom son and daughter. Lord, I pray that you would help us to be true representatives of you so that we can represent you every day and represent you well, not just doing it haphazardly or just saying one thing and living another kind of lifestyle, but Lord, that we would represent you well in all that we say and do. I thank you for Overcomers in Christ Ministries and how that you have given us this house to come and to learn, to glean just everything that we need is in the house. Lord, I thank you for our pastors, Pastor Don and Pastor Pat. Thank you for how that you continue to bless them, how you continue to bestow your favor and your grace and your anointing upon them. God, we pray for double grace, double anointing, double blessings upon them. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for a great outpouring of your spirit. We thank you for a great anointing in this place, Lord. Lord, I pray tonight as we go forth in the service that the Holy Spirit would have his way, that you would meet us here, God. Lord, as we have a heart to learn of you, Lord, help us in um, our knowledge of you, God. Give us divine impartation, Lord. Give each of us what we need at this exact moment, because we know that you can do it. You know where each of us are spiritually and naturally and everything else, Lord God. And we know that you can give us a right now word. In the name of Jesus, God, we give you thanks, glory, and honor for all those who are here in the house, for those who may be on their way, and for those who are watching live streams. God, I pray again that you would pour out your blessing upon them, God. God, help them to put aside anything that would distract them so that they can focus in on your word and to really hear what does say the Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Well, welcome to OIC. Welcome to another Wednesday night experience. We are glad to have you here, and I pray that you um, are in expectation of a mighty move of God, just as we are. Amen. Uh, at this time, we'll tell you our announcements for the week. Um, so, YouTube, we've been asking for you to like, share, and subscribe to the YouTube channel, and you've done so in that 100 mile marker we were trying to make. We made it. We're at 101. If you guys recall, I said 99 and a half won't do, and it didn't. And so, we made it to 101. So, praise God for that. Yeah, and keep inviting your friends, co-workers, acquaintances, you know, people that you pass on the street. Hey, subscribe to Overcomers in Christ Ministries. It'll change your life. You know, we can say something random. Hey, how's your day going? No, I'm good and well. You have no intention of sticking around for the answer. So you can surely say, like, share, and subscribe to Overcomers in Christ Ministries. Amen? Amen. The gift that keeps on giving. Next announcement is our intercessory prayer is every Saturday morning here in the house at 10 a.m. That's 879 White Pond Road in Elgin. Um, you're invited to come and pray with us every Saturday morning. The next is our prayer call. It's um, a conference line that we have, so we encourage you to dial in. The number is 605-562-8401. The access code is one six eight two three three two. Okay, so every Tuesday and Thursday morning, we are on that conference call seven thirty a.m. for military zero seven thirty hours. Amen. Um, the next is our Daniel fast is coming up. We know we do that every year at the beginning of the year, not on New Year's, you know, so you can't say, "Oh, well, I'm not." No, 
Today is on the 3rd, so you still have time to celebrate, bring the year in. But right after that, we dedicate that time so that we can start our year off in consecration with our Heavenly Father, just setting the tone for the rest of the year. Amen? So the Daniel Fast is January 3rd through the 23rd. Amen? Last, uh, well, not last, but OIC Christmas Get Together is this Friday. That's in two days. Amen? We're going to get together and celebrate, fellowship, do some games, have some fun, eat a little something, and fellowship. You know, not coming to have a meal, but, you know, we're going to fellowship, eat some good things. And then play some good Christian games. It's not going to be Christian games, but they're going to be, uh, you know, above board type things. And I'm going to stop talking about that. All right, the next announcement is we're collecting treats for soldiers who will be on Fort Jackson for Christmas. You know, some soldiers are unable to make it home for the holidays, and so we want to be able to bless them. If you want to donate to that, you can um, cash app us at cash tag OICM. Or you can send money through bail at oicmpastor at gmail.com. Or if you're local, you can bring your goods to the house or call or text one of us, and we'll meet you somewhere so that we can um, collect your donations, okay? And it's things such as cakes, pies, cookies, candy, text mix, store-bought, holiday candy, cookies, snacks, and goodie bags. Amen? Yes, homemade or store-bought, so. Thank you for that. Um, the deadline is Wednesday, the 22nd. Amen. So that we'll have time to bag it all together and hand it off to the POC. Next is our Wednesday night Bible study um, for the 22nd and 29th of December. It's going to be online only. Okay, our pastor is gracious enough to let us spend that time with our family. So it's not a day off. Amen. Bible study is not canceled. It's just whether you're at your house, at your, I don't know, if you go to a restaurant or something, everybody's sitting around the phone or the tablet. Just be together and ready with your notebook, your Bible, amen. And like I said, it's not a day off. Bible study is not canceled. You should still plan on 7 o'clock. I know where to be. I know what's happening, amen. Amen. And finally, Saturday morning prayer on Christmas Day is... Canceled. Aww. Amen. But hopefully you'll do what we tend to do. We uh, we still pray, you know, and we show our gratitude to God. We still remember the reason for the season. Amen. Hallelujah. So that is all of our announcements. So please govern yourselves accordingly. Amen. Now it is time to give. Hallelujah. Amen. We know that at OIC, we are tithe bringers. It's an opportunity to give to God just a small portion of what He has blessed us with. So, our ways to give are through Cash App using the hashtag OICM, Giselle, OICM Pastor at gmail.com, or you can mail it to PO Box 1291, Elgin, South Carolina, 29045. Amen. So, now to stand with me, we'll go ahead and pray over. Our offering. God, we thank you and we praise you tonight. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. Lord, we thank you for um, allowing us another opportunity to sow into the kingdom and giving us the money to even be able to sow back into the kingdom, God. And so I pray that you would bless this money, Lord God. Bless our offerings that we're bringing to you. And um, we know that we're sowing it into good ground, into good fertile ground. And we pray, Lord God, that it would just be useful in upbuilding the kingdom of heaven. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, the 91st Psalm, the canopy of God's protection. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the air by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand
heaven shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God for the canopy of God's protection. We've heard so many testimonies about how just um, when certain situations or emergencies came up, how we were able to call a recall Psalm 91 and just recall the promises of God, how we know that his angels are and can't round about us. Amen. So if you have not yet committed um, that chapter to memory, I encourage you to do so. And just remember that it's not something that we just recite. It's something that we believe. Amen. Praise God. And now uh, we'll have our pastor. Oh, after we sing one congregational song. Amen. Uh, we're going to say, I will bless thee, O Lord. So again, I encourage you to join in. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. With the heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O Even when we are not as faithful as we could be to Him, 
Amen. He's an awesome God. The word said, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. No better place than to be than in the house of the Lord. Truly, we thank God for all of you who have pressed your way, made your way, our visitors, our friends. Amen. My Lord. It's good to see you. God bless you being in the house tonight. Amen. To our live stream audience, those who have uh, zoomed in, amen, weekly and support us faithfully. We thank God for your prayers and support. Amen. Truly, God is a good God. And I pray that because of your prayers and support that we can keep doing what God has called us to do. Amen. Amen. I don't care about the pandemic. We still need a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. And we still need to encourage one another. Am I right about it? Amen. I know during this season, so many are going through. People have issues, problems, circumstances. Amen. They're mourning, grieving. Amen. And there's a remnant of believers who say, I'm still trusting God through it all. May be hurting, but I'm still trusting God that this thing, what I'm going through, it won't always be like this. Amen. And I'm going to trust God until it's over with. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, yeah, greet Pastor Pat. Amen. I, I know you're watching, Pastor Pat. We love you. We miss you in the house, but we still believe in God for a supernatural comeback. Come on, somebody. Amen. We see it every day. She's getting stronger. The prayers are still going up. Amen. And she's making plans to enter, come back into the house of the Lord. I'm excited already. <laughs> Amen. Are you ready for Bible study? Amen. Normally we start off with a quiz. Amen. We may ask just one or two, you know, questions. Some of the based on Sunday's message. We had some members couldn't make it tonight, but we still must go on in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's pray. Father, I thank you tonight. Hallelujah, God, for your loving kindness and your tender mercy. God, you are awesome, God. And Father, without you, we could do nothing and be nothing. But God, with you, oh God, all things, God, hallelujah, are working together for our good, oh God, and for your glory. Father, I thank you tonight because we came, God, with our cups extended. God, fill us again. Let there be an overflow, God, in our lives. Hallelujah. In every area, we surrender and submit to your authority, O oh God. God, we hide nothing from you, O oh God. God, we pray that the power of the Holy Ghost will minister to every need tonight, collectively and individually. God, give us an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to us tonight, O oh God. Feed us from manna, with manna from on high, O oh God. And Father, I thank you, God, as I hide behind the cross, God, that they may see you and hear you, O oh God, God, and receive what they need for their soul, the spirit man tonight. And God, we thank you because you are faithful to your word, O oh God. And Father, I thank you that it's already done. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Just, just we'll, we'll start with a few questions, then we'll get right into our lesson. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. We, we talked about Sunday. Amen. Kairos time. Amen. And so the first... Uh, uh, question or, or situation was the time. What did we say Kairos time was? Amen. All right, we'll go ahead and answer that. <laughs> Kairos time is God's appointed time when God says, Now is the time. Amen. He does not operate in our chronos time, which is measured in years. Months, weeks, days, hours, minutes, and seconds. He operates in high 
time. Amen. I know y'all remember that. Amen. Where is one of the most difficult places to be, according to what uh, we were uh, talking about Sunday? All right, I'll answer that. It's in God's waiting room. Amen. In God's waiting room, it's difficult because it, it, we want things. Our culture teaches us and uh, shows us that we need things right now. But when God, God answers in three ways, yes, no, and wait. Amen. And we always are expecting the yes, Lord. Yes, thank you, Lord. I receive, I receive. But what happens in God's waiting room when he says, you're going to have to wait. Amen. It's difficult. You can ask Abraham and, and Sarah. They, had, they got in God's waiting room and said, it looks like it's not going to happen. And so uh, they came up with a, a Ishmael. All right, we're going to leave that right there. All right, true or false? God's promises do not expire. All right, I guess you don't have to. All right. <laughs> Where can I find this scripture? But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. And I, can you tell me where to find that in the Word of God? Isaiah 40 and 31. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Who controls time? God. Okay, that's not a trick question. Amen. God, God controls time. Amen. True or false, we should expect every season to be the same in our lives. True or false? False. All right. All right. Now we, we get there. All right. According to Sunday's message, God's delays are not always uh, what God, God's what? Denial. All right. I don't know if I asked that right, but amen. God's delays are not always God's denial. Amen. All right. So what scripture, where can I find this? And being fully persuaded that what he has promised, he is able also to perform. No. <laughs> Uh-oh. And being fully persuaded that what he has promised, he is able also to perform. Romans 4. Amen. Listen, here's the bonus. If you can tell me what was that referring to, uh, you get a hundred and we're going to move on. Do you remember what that was referring to? All right, we're moving. All right. <laughs> Amen. All right, I just defined the last question, chronos time. What is chronos time? Months, years, weeks. Amen. So there's a difference between chronos and Cairo time. All right. Did everybody get all of them? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Julie, God is good. This month we have been sharing from a uh, series, Divine Acceleration. Amen. The Divine Acceleration. And divine acceleration is when God is God's supernatural ability. Amen. He, he interrupts our normal with his supernatural ability. And he speeds up things that would normally take a long time. He speeds it up uh, in things that are humanly impossible. In other words, he moves you from the back of the list and moves you to the front of the list. Amen. And people are saying, how was that possible when we have a backlog? How is it possible for you to get promoted when there were other people more qualified than you were? How did it happen when the doctor said it's going to take years for your recovery and all of a sudden God's favor, God's supernatural ability 
uh, is poured out upon your life. I wonder if there is anybody who wants acceleration in their life tonight. Hallelujah. Acceleration, divine acceleration. Amen. And tonight we're just going to do another extension of uh, that series, Divine Acceleration. Tonight I just want to spend a few minutes with you on the subject, Prepare for Elevation. Hallelujah. Prepare for Elevation. Last Sunday we spoke about God's timing. We know that God's timing is perfect. Amen. In Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 says, There is a time and a season for everything under the sun. And I believe there is a season in our life in the midst of this post-pandemic that God wants to accelerate some things. It looks like this uh, pandemic has pushed us some things aside, pushed us back, and God is saying, because of favor, I want to accelerate some things in your life. Come on, somebody. Yeah, and so with divine acceleration, I believe it's time to prepare for elevation. All right, well, well so Pastor John, what are you talking about? Well, let's open our Bibles, if we would, to Psalm 75. Many in the church are very familiar with this passage of Scripture, Psalm 75. We're going to read uh, verses 6 and 7. Amen. It says, For promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south. But God is the judge. He putteth down one and setteth up another. Amen. Hallelujah. So God is the judge. God, he putteth down one and setteth up another. Amen. See, whenever God accelerates, amen, those who he has chosen, you're elevated to a higher position. And I'm not talking about always in the natural, but even in the spiritual realm, you're promoted uh, and, and pushed up into an higher level in God. See, things in God never should stay the same. In other words, when you started out with Christ 10 years ago, you should not be at the same place today. Amen. Five years from now, you ought to be on another level in Christ. Matter of fact, not in five years from now, uh, months from now, weeks from now. Amen. As you are, as we are dedicating our life, surrendering our life, submitting our life to the authority and power of God, God says, because I see your heart and my plan and my purpose for you, I'm going to elevate you. Uh, to another. Now, is there anyone, somebody here tonight that says, oh, Lord, I'm a candidate for elevation. Uh, I want to be elevated in God. See, man can promote you, and man can demote you. <laughs> All right? Amen. And see, sometimes we get caught up with trying to do it uh, in the flesh, and man says, well, you know, how many of her, you're not what we're looking for, and you, but I studied, I went to college, I got this degree, that degree, and, 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 and I, I'm, I'm friends with that, I know who, and they said, you are not qualified, but when, when God elevates you, it doesn't matter what man may say, when God promotes you, is there anybody want to get promoted in God? Hallelujah. It, when God elevates it, there's nothing man can do to block it. Hallelujah. When God's favor is on your life. Uh, back in the day, we used to say, Lord, pass me not, old gentle Savior. During this pandemic, I don't want the Lord to pass me by. During this season of uh, divine acceleration. Amen. We are taken to a higher level in God. See, God is, listen, God is all about change.
changing our status spiritually and in the natural. Amen. Why is that? Because he wants to give all the glory. Somebody shout glory. God wants to get glory out of our lives. And see, the people of God, if we are always down and in the gutter and, oh, Lord, I can't make it, the world don't want our God. But when they can see you being elevated in God, both spiritually and in the natural, what is, what is it about your life that it seems like you always just have in favor poured upon your life? It's time for you to testify. It's not me. It's all about Him. Y'all believe that, right? Amen. It's all about Him. And when God gets glory, when He gets the glory out of our life, it seems like He even opens the windows of heaven even the more. Hallelujah. And begin to shower blessings that you did not ask for. Hallelujah. My God, y'all, y'all experienced some things you you haven't asked for. You were praying, you were being faithful, you were trusting God, and God saw your heart and says, because you are being faithful, because you have poured out your heart in this area, I'm going to overbless you. I'm going to pour out favor in this area. Hallelujah. I write about now in this season, I need some favor from God. I just need one person to say, I mean, like, I want just a little favor from God. Woo, my God. If I got to get happy by myself. Amen. But Pastor John, his Bible said, Amen. This is what I came to tell somebody tonight. Don't get fixated on your current status. Y'all need to type that in. Don't get uh, Fixated. Don't get settled. Don't get comfortable because God in this season of elevation is getting ready to promote you and prepare you in Him. Amen. Amen. Because why is that important? Because Jeremiah, we know that in Jeremiah 29 and 11, He has a plan. He wants to work His plan in and through our life, but He needs that willing vessel who will say, Yes, Lord. Use me for your glory. Yes, Lord, I am available. Because, see, everybody's not available. They talk in the talk, but when God says, uh, go into my waiting room, there, uh, the Bible says when he was calling and telling the, the, his followers, listen, you got to uh, uh, eat my flesh and drink of my blood. The Bible says, they say, this is such a hard thing. And they said, and they turned and followed him no more. But as long as he had the fish fry, as long as he had the, the load, they'll say, yes, give me more. He went out in the ship and went to the other side, and here they go. Give me more. But when he says, you got to submit, oh, yeah, you got to get into me, intimacy, come into me. They say, oh, we don't want it that part. We want the intimate, we want the things and the benefits of righteousness, but we don't want the intimacy. And God says, no, 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 I'm looking to elevate those who want to be into me, intimate with me. Uh, and so when we meet the standard, and then one of the things I love about God, you can just be going and going about your godly business, being an example, being a life. And you may not even be expecting promotion, but because of favor. And God sees you, and God has a plan for you. He says, I'm going to take that quiet one. I'm not really looking for that one that says, I'm on the board, I want to do this, and I'm, I'm next in line, and I know about three people, right? No, no, you got, no, no, you're doing too much, the young people say. <laughs> you're just doing the most. He's going to pick that one. He's choosing the one that's quietly serving them. The one that's quietly uh, um, serving out in the community, passing out tracks, working with those uh, on social media. He says, I'm looking at that one who's faithful. That one who I can trust with, with much. Because listen, uh, when, when the most comes, listen, you and I got to be prepared for it. You got churches. Look at, look at, 
look at we, we're small in number, but God is saying, if we want to get promoted and elevated, we got to act like we're a big church. We got to start, it starts in our mindset. Oh, since we're small, we'll stay small, we'll do small our, our vision. Look, listen, we'll take our big vision because things are happening as fast as we think. We'll take our big vision and narrow it down to where we are currently. And God says, no, keep your vision where it is. I'm going to elevate you to your purpose. I'm going to elevate you to the level that you can believe me for. Because many times, our faith fails us to the point where well, maybe I'm not, I'm dreaming too big. And so I'm going to bring it down to uh, what I can afford, what I can put into my own what I can do, and God says, you're not ready. You need to go back to the waiting room until you can go through the process of trusting me with your whole heart, mind, soul, and body. Amen. Are y'all getting this? Amen. It calls for us to be living a holy and sanctified life before God. Listen, when we are living a sanctified life before God, amen. God begins to fill us with expectancy. Hallelujah. And when he fills us with expectancy, uh, we've got to have that expectancy that is comes with full of faith. Amen. And so when you put expectancy and faith together, God is saying, now you are preparing for elevation. Amen. Flowing with the leading of the Holy Ghost. See, we cannot leave the Holy Ghost out of the equation. Many times we're seeing our churches, we're doing great things. We got we got superstars, we got fans, and but God says, we have you made room for the Holy Ghost? Uh, don't expect elevation without the Holy Ghost. Oh, Lord, I probably get put out the church, but I've got to tell you the truth. We can't do what God wants us to do without the working and infilling of the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And so as we prepare for elevation, listen, you got to write this down. Elevation will always lead to reassignment to a higher position. Elevation will always lead to reassignment to a higher position. Hallelujah. Amen. And so when we understand God, God giving more, I want to avail myself more to the working and the wooing, the unctioning of the Holy Ghost. God, endow me. That's why I'm excited for this 21 day fast, January 3rd through the 23rd. Because that's a time when we can so detox. We can get rid of the clutter. We can get out of, rid of the bears and the blockages and the things that are trying to hinder us from pursuing God. Because in this season, it is not the time to stop pursuing after God. I want more of it. I want my cup overflowing. I want to stay in the season of God. Here I am. Use me if you need anything. If you need anybody, God, I make myself a available. Amen. And, and as we avail ourselves to God, God says you are prime candidate for elevation. Are y'all getting this? And so elevation carries this meaning. Elevation carries this meaning. It means being brought from a low position to a higher position. All right? So it entails Listen, it entails a repositioning, a repositioning. Amen. And so when 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 we're talking about elevation, that means God is taking you from where you are to something higher. Uh, amen. And it's all designed by God. Amen. Elevation will always lead to reassignment to a higher I came to tell somebody God sees you, and God knows how to work the details out of 
uh, and for your elevation. Amen. See, divine elevation, when you look at it from a spiritual uh, mindset or point of view, it is a divine set up by God. See, the, uh, what I like uh, about God, He just don't take you from uh, uh, being in a, a low position and automatically put you in the high because we wouldn't be able to handle it. But in the process of moving in elevation, in the middle, he don't tell you about the process. And it's in the midst of the process that you can go from the, the pit, you, know, you can go from fighting the pit, the prison to the palace, and then get promoted to prime minister. But you've got to get through the process to experience the uh, higher position that God has for you. Many, I can tell you, I didn't get here just because I'm saved. For years, I've been, I've been on the other side of the mountain, teaching and ministering to people. Uh, not, not necessarily, oh, one day I want to be a pastor. No, God, use me any way you get things fit to use me. And when you be faithful to God, guess what? He becomes, he gets real faithful with you. He can trust you with more. The question we ask ourselves, can God trust you on a higher plane? Because, listen, if you're not faithful in the little things that God is saying, how can he trust you with more responsibility? Because it's not time to be playing with people's lives. We look on the TV and we see the glam and we see the people and we like, oh, if I could, that could be me. You don't know what it took to get there. Every minister, can I tell you the truth? Every minister has his own story. And I can tell you this, all of them, they were there. Some of them was barely hanging on. Some of them wanted to turn around. Some of them didn't know what was going on in that moment, but they kept trusting, kept being faithful. And in due season, God elevated them because they went through the process. But now you got to ask yourself, do you, are you willing to go through the process that God has laid out for your life? Because in the process, it's going, many times, going to be painful. Oh, my Lord. Did I say pain? That's where we're going to lose a lot. <laughs> through the process, you're going to experience pain. In the process, you're going to experience disappointment. You're going to have some setbacks, but if you remember, uh, elevation is divine set up by God. So no matter how many times you think you've been set up, uh, God, you're, you're being positioned by God to be elevated, to be set up for elevation. See, elevation is a divine set up by God. Listen to this. Prepared in heaven and manifested here on earth. In other words, when God purposes in his heart and in his mind to elevate you, amen, it just is not a, 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 a thought that just happens. It was part of his plan for your life. Uh, it was part of his, in his heart. It originates in his heart, in his mind, just for you. I, I, my heart, I see what my son, I see my daughter, and I've got to work my plan in his life. Yes, he's in jail right now. Yes, they strung out on drugs. Yes, they all going on closer. But my plan for your life, my purpose for your life, has not changed. Y'all know that, right? Some of the greatest preachers are the ones that came off the street. Some of the greatest preachers and ministers are the ones who are the society had passed aside. Because God knows once they get cleaned up, he's taking them from a low position and he's going to elevate them because they, they understand if it had not been for God. See, the ones that, you know, the ones that have lived a good life, 
had good stuff, always had a home, and it always had money flowing, always had this. See, you thankful, but when they when they come off the street and they know they were one one needle away from losing their life, it seems like they got a greater appreciation for life now. That they met Christ. It seems like they have a greater hallelujah because I know I was one, one pill away. I was one needle away from uh, sacrificing my life uh, for just to get high. But God had a plan, God got a purpose. And they said, since I've given my life to Christ, God has begun to minister to me. I begin to give all of my life. I'm giving, I'm sacrificing because I know greater is coming. Ah, it's all about Him and His perfect timing. Y'all know God does things in His timing. Many times when we're God, I need this now. God, we, we try to put a time limit on God. And God says, no, 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 no. Now is not the time. You've got to wait on God. See, the problem is not in God. The problem will always be in man. Amen? Daniel 2 and 21 says in the Amplified Bible. Daniel 2 and 21. It is he talking about God. He changes the times and seasons. He removes kings and establishes kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and greater knowledge to those who have understanding. And in my study, I remember reading about Joseph. Y'all remember the story of Joseph in Genesis, around the starting around the thirty seventh chapter. Amen. He was rejected by his brothers. He was put in a pit, and then he was sold into slavery, uh, all through the palace, into the prison, then promoted to the second in command of uh, Egypt. Joseph's elevation was orchestrated and set up by God, and Joseph did not understand it at the time. Can I tell you, some of the people you're closest to won't understand the process that God has for your life. And many times, we're looking for, looking to the wrong people for affirmation. And God says, if you can just shift your focus, transitioning is happening. Of course, we don't want to get in a pit. Who wants to get put in by the people who's supposed to be promoting your dream? Part of, but listen, some people who are saying they with you today is not going to the elevated place that God is taking you. Let them go. And that's offering time. You're going to have to let them go. Because listen, Lot was not supposed to go with Abraham. But he took him anyway, and you see, he got himself in some trouble. Everybody in your sphere of influence don't want to see you elevated, first of all. They love you. They're with you as long as you're in the low position. But when God puts his hand of authority and approval on your life and he elevates you, then they're going to start huh? you. We used to pick it together. Yeah, you're right. We used to. I still love you. I'm still going to say hi and send you Christmas things and holiday things, but God has moved me from my low position. And listen, I only want to be in relationship with those who can promote me to my next level. Give up on insignificant people in your life. Don't, when I say give up, I'm saying don't put your energy, waste your time on insignificant people. Say, don't do that. Don't go to that sacrifice. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Uh-uh. No, you, you are on assignment. And listen, listen, when I was uh, taking college classes, oh, Lord, help me. When I was taking classes and you have to, you got a deadline to write those papers by 11.59. If you haven't put that, you late. 1,200 words, 1,600 words in our writings. And, and sometimes, listen, Lord, I repent. 
I'm on the last night, and I was like, oh, God, I'm only, I've got 400 words. It's 10 o'clock at night. Where am I going to get all these words? Nobody does that. <laughs> I'm watching the clock. I'm, Jesus, I'm all, I'm all 850 words. It's basically 11 o'clock. It's me. I, I know y'all, 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 y'all don't do nothing. <laughs> Amen. But Lord, when that thing, when that hand start coming around on the other side of that 30, 10, 30, 11, 30, I begin to say, God, I need more help. I need more grace. <laughs> I'm not saying wait till the last minute to do anything. But Joseph was in a position of elevation that was orchestrated by God. And when you read in Genesis 39 and 2, Man, this blessed me when I read it. I know I've read it before, but the Bible says in Genesis 39 and 2, it says, and God was with Joseph. Woo-hoo! Somebody need to take that and apply it to their heart. Genesis 29 and 2, and the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian city. Joseph didn't ask for all of this. He didn't put his name in the house and say, Lord, uh, put me in there. No, no, no. He served whatever condition, situation he found himself, he served faithfully. And the Bible says, and the Lord was with him. I wonder, is there anyone, somebody tonight, and say, I know the Lord is with me. Ah, during each assignment that Joseph encountered, he remained faithful to God, and he honored God by serving others. If you want to be considered for elevation, start serving others. Start serving God's people. Amen. Do it with all of your heart, all of your mind, and strength. Amen. And elevation will be on the way. I got to read you. Uh, my next point is don't forget to remember God. Don't forget to remember Jesus Christ. Deuteronomy 8, verses 10 and 11 a. Deuteronomy 8, verses 10 and 11 a. When thou hast eaten and art full, amen, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he has given thee. Beware. Uh-oh, listen now. You got to zoom in on this. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I command thee this day. In other words, listen, don't get high-minded and think you did it all by yourself. Never get the mindset, I am a self-made holy man. I am a self-made apostle, a prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. No, 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 you go sit down. Get on the altar, matter of fact, till you get broken. Until God can snatch that pride out of your heart and out of your mind. God is looking for those that says, Lord, I know if it had not been you. Lord, if you hadn't chosen me, I wouldn't be in this position. Hallelujah. Uh, that opens the door for God to keep blessing you. Amen. Because once pride sits in your heart, my God, he brings other demons, uh, other spirits, and then you'll start it'll spread to the congregation. No, you need to get broken on the altar and start with repentance. Uh, you don't hear that word much in the churches, but uh, don't expect anything uh, from God and you can't have a repentant heart and spirit. Amen? Amen. You cannot work to earn elevation. God determines who and how to bring it to pass. The Bible says God is the judge. Somebody shout judge. He brings down one and exalts another. Yes, Saul was the king. He was in the top position, but God anointed somebody in second place. Uh, David got anointed while Saul was in the position. Y'all get that this week. In your spirit, you'll get that. Somebody may be in that position.
position that you see in the natural. But when God gets finished with you, he's going to put one down and exalt you to be in the position. But don't fight for that position. Let God do it. So listen, listen, listen. The Bible says, listen, the Bible says, David was anointed king by prophet Samuel and began serving King Saul. In other words, even though David had the anointing by God, he was chosen by God, he didn't go up to Saul, King Saul said, move over. Get out of the way. I'm now, I'm going to be the king. No, he began serving King Saul. Amen. My God, that takes humility. To, to be in second position, and you know God is ready, and God is preparing you for the number one position, and you got to wait on God's promise. Many of us up today be like, mm-mm. Just read Red Tonight, listen to a YouTube. It was eight members in the pastor's church that got together and said, we don't want the pastor no more. He's not making the church grow. He's not this. He's not that. In the seven and a half years he's been here, and they voted to move the pastor. And the police come in on a Sunday morning. He's preaching, and he's telling them about Jesus Christ. And he gets handcuffed out of his own church on a Sunday morning. That's not of God. But when you're not fully connected, when there's some loopholes, when the enemy comes in, he has no respect for God's house and God's people. That's why you got to be ever so careful to let God do this thing. Hallelujah. And when God does it, he does it well. Amen. I came to tell somebody tonight, and I'm closing. I got two minutes. Whatever you're going through in life right now, it's, it's, listen, it's not by incident or accident or happenstance. It's a setup by God. Now, while you're in it, I, listen, the Bible says, so, it says, in everything, give thanks. Find whatever you're in, find a reason to give God the glory. Never murmur and complain and an oh Lord, why me? God wants you to turn that question around and say, why not me? Father, I thank you for choosing me worthy to suffer and go through for your name's sake. Why not me? And as you see God moving, and, and, and listen, when God begins to prepare you for elevation, you got to get this. He's going to give you the grace. Somebody shout grace. He's going to give you the grace you need to overcome. What is grace, Pastor John? Grace is God's supernatural ability on our weakness, on our infirmities, on our frailty. It's God's ability to give us and do something in and through our life that we couldn't normally do without His grace. That's why the Word says, my grace is sufficient. Because in and of our own strength, we can't go through it. We can't, we can't make it happen in our natural strength. So God says, I'm going to release some grace on your life. I'm wondering if there's any one somebody who says, Pastor John, I'm, one, I'm in line for some grace from God. Hallelujah. I need just a little bit more of His grace. Amen. And I'm done. I want to close with this. Humble yourself. First Peter five. I, I'm not finished, but I got to quit. First Peter five verses six and seven in the English Standard Version. It says, "Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time He may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on Him." Because he cares for you. And when you do that, you begin to get positioned for elevation. Remember earlier I told you that elevation means repositioning. That repositioning carries this meaning. You got to get this, and I'm, I'm done. It means, repositioning means to shift, to transfer, to move, and to relocate. Amen. And so when God begins to shift some things in your life, 
you say yes, Lord. When God begins to relocate you, just say yes, Lord. When God begins to transfer some things around, just say yes, Lord. Because listen, the way God operates, He's not going to operate in an unwilling vessel. You have to get to a point where whatever God wants to do, it has to be yes, Lord. Because how God operates in the earth realm, He needs an invitation. Oh, come on, y'all. Yes, yes, He has all power. Yes, He can make us that zombies and we just get warm. No, we got the freedom of choice. We got to have a will to say yes to God. God, whatever you want to do in and through my life, it's always yes, Lord, because when God is in control of our life and we as believers and disciples, it should never be no lower. It should always be yes, Lord, stand to your feet. We ought to get to a place now in our lives where you say, go ahead, take a good look at me now. Because what you're looking at now is not where I'm staying. God is getting ready to reposition my life to a new level in Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is by eye closed. Wherever you at, wherever God has you right now, God is saying, expect elevation. Expect repositioning. Hallelujah. God wants to shift some things in your life. Oh, my God. God wants to shift some things in your life like only He can. You may be saying, Lord, why? Why? Why is this happening? Why? Why don't they understand? Why can't somebody hear my heart? God is saying, you're in the middle of a process. Oh, my God. Don't knock the process. Just flow with the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost begins to move and um, function in your spirit, man, just say, Lord, I, I help me to understand. Help me to avail myself to the unction and moving of the Holy Ghost. And in the midst of you saying, yes, Lord, God says, now you prepare for elevation. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, I thank you. I thank you. I receive your word, God, with my whole heart, my mind, my spirit, man. God, I thank you for uplifting my heart tonight. God, in spite of what I'm dealing with and going through, oh, God, the pain, the pressure, and the problems, oh, God, that you still got your hand upon our lives, God. You still love us unconditionally, oh, God. And, Father, I thank you for a word that will elevate my spirit in you, O oh God, knowing that God is your plan and purpose for my life, O oh God. Hallelujah, as I remain faithful and trusting you, making the trusting and adjustment, God, to trust your word, no matter what I'm dealing with, no matter what I'm going through. Father, I thank you for that man, that woman, that boy and girl that's at the crossroads of life. And say, I don't know what to do. Father, I pray that the power of God would open the eyes of the understanding, that they will see a need to call upon the name of Jesus, oh God, because at that name every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is the Lord. Father, I thank you, God, that because your faithfulness to us, God, we can trust you with our very life. And Father, I thank you for that, that person who says, I want this Jesus in my life. God, that they would be transformed from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And Father, you are so faithful. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Put your hands together. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for you, our dear friends. We love you, amen, praying for you, that God's favor would be on your life, amen. Let's do our benediction, hallelujah. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Raise your hands, Father. I thank you tonight, God, as we go out into the hedges and the highways, 
and God, go through the rest of the week as you delay your coming and spare our life, that we will share your amazing grace with somebody else. Father, remember those who are having difficulties during this uh, season, this celebration season, oh God. Those who have lost loved ones, those that have no hope for a better day. God, use us. Help us to seize the moment, the opportunity to share some love by serving your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. Amen. Our friends, do you want to say anything? We're not on the